Hello everyone, I welcome you all. We'll wait for a couple of minutes till more people join in. So today, actually, uh, today's topic is very, very interesting and something which is very close to my heart. It is about natural childbirth. This is something not very new in our country, and not many people are aware of it. To differentiate natural childbirth means no medication at all. And so today we have our very own expert Priyanka from Kerala, who's a certified, trained childbirth. expert she has been extensively trained in pre and postnatal care and she is the director of uh, birth village which is a natural birthing center in kerala so we welcome you uh priyanka just waiting for her to join in Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Arshi? I'm good. Welcome on board, and I'm so excited to finally, I'm getting to speak to you. So, thank you so much for giving us your time because I know you are you are having a very busy schedule these days. So, thank you so much for this. The honor is all mine. So uh, before we start, Priyanka, I would want to know that how has your journey been? Because I think you also started out as a mother first, and then yeah. you know you took. How has your journey been so far? Like what? How did you get here? As to what you're okay. doing right now? Right. So your question is about my journey to midwifery. That is the question, yes. right? Okay. Yes. So basically, um, I um, my education I started off with. bachelor's and masters in microbiology is my subject um and i was working for a good 8 years in the diagnostic industry before i had my uh, son and uh, i came to have my son in the my native town which is kochi from around 2006 is when i came in and i had my son and at that point in india there was no concept of childbirth education i mean even on lactation of professionals there was nothing at that time It was like a Correct. big, you know, that there was a big uh, void. Let me put void. it that way. Yeah. Right. Correct. Big void. And uh, I was one of those women who had what you would say uh, a so-called normal birth, mm. but and I'm sure 99 of the women would have been okay with it because people normally look at did you have a normal or did you have a cesarean? I mean that's basically Correct. the question, right? Yes. But yes, I was yes. I was probably in the one out of hundred where I felt something was not right. Right. and uh, that led me uh, to a path of discovery uh, to a path of uh, a lot of self exploration let me put it that way and in those days to learn a childbirth education course that's how i started out uh, there was no way we could learn in india it was not possible we did not yes. have on- i mean the only thing that was there online at that point was orkut that was about it there was nothing else <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have there was no i mean there was not a facebook but none of these things are there nothing right um, i see. i don't think i actually now i remember i didn't even have a cell phone I, i didn't even have that so you know that was the era at that point of time but um, so i had to travel to the us to finish my course came back um, i taught i attended labors Uh, and in 2010, in uh, I went ahead uh, to do the first, probably one of the first water births in the country, and okay. uh, I chose a hospital as a venue. I did have a midwifery partner at that point of time, and mm. it was a good birth. It was nice, uh, but I was very sure that that's not the place for this. Correct. So I was very sure for a gentle birth. For a birth that's undisturbed, um, having ten, fifteen people to watch, and people opening and closing the doors all the time is not my cup of tea. You know, so yes, I cannot yes. accept that. And um, I said, we 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 want to do this, but if we are doing this, it will be in a different line, and the work and the space has to be defined by us. 
See, at that point of time, to open a birth center in this country was you are starting from ground zero because nothing existed. I mean, today it's a right. different story, but then at that point there was nothing. Uh, so that's how we began. Uh, I also was studying and running a center simultaneously. So I was doing my course, my exams, traveling up and down to the U.S. Um, you know, uh, it was a lot. Oh wow. Lot. You know, yeah, and I think my son, when I was starting out, my son was probably when I started my education is probably like one and a half, and when I started midwifery, he was four, and now he's fourteen. So it's like you know, it's like a whole trajectory, and we grew. Yes. We grew at every step. We kept growing. Uh, solely grew by the faith and trust of people, not with anything else. Uh, and sure. that's what has led us. You know, that's what has led us for this ten, thirteen years. It's yeah. been a hard journey. It's been difficult. Uh, there's many challenges, but obviously very satisfying at the same time. Yeah, because uh, this is not something which, as you said, the trust is a very big factor because it's not the conventional way of how children are born in our country. So you know, there's there's a lot of support that a mother requires from the family and her own willpower to take this part and then finally, yeah. because only when you are when you experience is when you know what is the difference between the conventional style and what you are doing at the birthing. Yeah. So that's so so beautiful. But as you said, like you know, you spoke about the mid that you are a midwife. You know, so how is it different from a normal nurse or a doctor? Like you know, right. who is a <laughs> midwife? Yeah. Sure. So this is uh, the interesting thing to understand is that midwifery existed in various forms since we had Adam and Eve. It was always there. It was Correct. always there. There was always yes. a woman to support another woman at childbirth. In India, yes. now if we are looking specifically with India, we had traditional birth attendants. Now my parents are born at home, so yeah. they had traditional birth attendants um, who came home, and they were all born at home. Like six or seven of them were born at home. Now, interestingly, now even I feel there's a bit of link with me and a traditional birth attendant is. Now, my ancestral house, where it stands uh, in my native place, uh, behind there is this big plot of land, and that mm -hmm. actually I grew up there, and I never knew it then. I just got to know of it very recently. That is where it, the traditional birth attendant lived, you know, right. and it's it's very interconnected that I kind of grew up on her land, and today that is my home. It we kind of bought it from them. But you know, it's amazing how I often think now. Did she actually select me from somewhere for me to go up? And today, I'm kind of linked somewhere to her. But anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> traditional birth attendant is there, and I have a lot of respect for traditional birth attendants because they are linked to our history and our past. Right. And we must always respect our past. I feel Definitely. what happened to our traditional birth attendants is they were poor, illiterate women who had a lot of skill, had a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and I and I traced and interviewed uh, some of their uh, because most of them are wiped out in the south. We don't have anybody anymore. It's almost wiped out, uh, yeah. especially in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. It's wiped out, but their children are still there. You know, so I interviewed some of them, and they were extremely feisty, strong women who didn't care about anything. That was the kind right. of women they were. Uh, there were cases when they told me the traditional birth attendant would be, you know, they would stop them from going for a birth. Maybe, you know, it would be belonging. It would be belonging to maybe a woman. Those days, I mean, marriage it was not necessary. So, you yeah. know, it would be a woman who was kind of just staying somewhere. And he, this, the son of this particular traditional birth attendant, told me he told his mother, "You will not go to this birth." And she said, "Just get lost. You know, I'm going. That's it." Those were the kind of. And she was must have been maybe like 25, 28 years old at that time, and all these things are happening. And she's somebody. Who is attending births from the age of fourteen? That that yeah. is the kind of lineage we came from. Yes. Now in yes. India, around the nineteen forty-five, nineteen forties, we did have midwifery as a curriculum in India. We had it. Oh wow! We wow. had it. It was pretty much there. However, post independence, the course got scrapped. And that's when the whole concept of hospital, hospital. You know, it just changed. And in fact, yeah. if you really look back, I know of doctors who are today eighty or ninety years old. They were attending births at home. You know, if you see some of the Hindi movies, you can see the doctors, yeah. the, you know, the bag, <laughs> and they come to do the visit yeah. and yeah. the checkup yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah. So we we deviated from there. So and then what happened in the West is that now in countries like the UK, for example, if you now even today they have a strong. system which is the nhs which is in the uk yeah. if you are healthy pregnant no diabetes no hypertension you will be seeing only a midwife in your pregnancy that's it yes yes right yeah. and so to answer that, 
even the, the i think charlotte the last uh, the royal uh, i mean kate middleton's daughter was born what i was reading in an article by a yeah. midwife you know she did not opt That's for right. any commercial fancy hosp- hospital and she did have an option and it That's was right. just uh, you know so that just means that this is something which is very much as you said it deep rooted in our system but um, yeah. the whole process has been changed and i think thanks That's to right. the whole commercialization and industrialization that That's right. So these midwives uh, across the world, when we look at good maternal outcomes, what yeah. is best for mothers and babies? Clearly, the WHO has mentioned midwife-led care means better outcomes for mother and baby. They have written a whole document about this, and all the Nordic countries. You look at Switzerland. You look at Sweden. Um, Germany, in fact, has a very good rule. They say you can birth without the doctor, but you cannot birth without the midwife. Right, right. That is Definitely. that is the, probably the only I would say that one of the good things that Hitler said is this. Yeah. So yeah. that's how the rest of the world operates. Right. Right. Now midwifery. Now what I'm talking about. Now unfortunately in our country, a nurse. Just a six month program. Oh my God. So that means a nurse is not a midwife. Number one. Correct. She's not. Right. She doesn't have enough no. knowledge. No. Yeah. No. No. Now, an obstetrician is a specialist for surgical knowledge. For surgeries, we do need them. There is no doubt about that. But a truly trained midwife across the globe is a specialist for natural births. It's just two different specialities. That's all. Right. Right. It's right. two different specialities, and the government of India is looking at how to bring about midwifery right now at a natural level. Yeah. It is looking at it because very sadly, if you look at Pakistan and you look at Sri Lanka, they have midwives too. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree on that. I so was just uh, dead. Lord God, that's Correct. right. But we are one of the few countries, for whatever reason, it just didn't happen. I, I think they were called daimas, and you know, like these kind of people, as you said, in our traditional houses where they would come and you know uh, take care of the mother who's giving birth, and it was always in a closed room with just that stranger, and everybody else was from the family. And now yeah. it's quite the opposite. You know, nobody it's from the family is allowed, and you are surrounded right. by strangers, and right. you feel like a cow because anybody comes, and you know they do the, as they say, the private visits. So it just, it's. I know I've been. through it too so it's just not it's not respecting the women i feel and the mother at that's all right. in the entire process yeah. the difference uh, between a midwife uh, the difference that's, that's the thing people get confused between whether a midwife is a daima it's not yeah so a midwife i wife is a health professional a, yeah correct it's all medical yeah, knowledge like as well Yes, yes. But the, uh, obviously, but this was when back there. Then they had they got it from their ancestors, as you said, no knowledge. Yeah. There was no nothing through the books. But yeah. now we have certified courses where you are a yeah. professional, we trained yeah. for this area, yeah. right? Yeah. That's right. Uh, so actually, when I was looking at a lot of questions, there's a lot of confusion. So a lot of mothers think natural birth is as good as vaginal birth. You know, they don't know the difference mm-hmm. that. you know uh, so if you could elaborate more that what exactly is when we say a natural child birth you know it's right. not yeah see a natural child birth is one where there's no medical interventions including episiotomy which is performed 99% in our country yeah so a natural child birth is something probably what our grandmothers had yeah you know basically no intervention uh, and i'm not saying it wrong intervention when there is a medical need absolutely for sure because it can help a mother and baby and we are aware of it we are cognizant of that fact yes. however if there is no requirement then it's not required in that space at all that's just it yes so today unfortunately in the last 50 60 years and this includes people like my mother also they do not know what natural childbirth is anymore yes i agree i totally you know, agree it's, it's completely wiped out So yeah. we are just listening to them, or we are kind of listening to our cousins or friends or sisters or whatever. So it's just wiped out for the past sixty years, you know. So yeah. only intuitive, very intuitive, and you know, you read and uh, you have a lot of respect for the past, then you will be led to it. Right, right, you know? right. And a midwife or a traditional birth attendant in the community had a space like. she was this wise woman in the village 
you know i always say a good teacher is one who will not keep patting you all the time the good yes. teacher will yes. tell you everything that's how yeah, a good teacher is yeah you yes. have to be open minded to tell everything because if you are yes. not open minded then you are not the right person yeah for the profession agreed agreed but like you know like as i was talking to rohini in the past so she told me that there's a whole process that you follow you know because the child when you talk about natural life it's not the right hour when you get into labor you know yeah. so if you could help us through the whole process which we follow so that a mother can successfully at least a probability of delivering naturally increases right i think the first thing there are certain cornerstones eating healthy um definitely i want to say that throw away your junk and your processed and all that uh don't be afraid to move you need to exercise because you don't have farms like the yester years where people worked you don't have it anymore so you yeah. need to be moving and exercising and making sure you're fit and healthy that's very crucial because i've been in that space with many women where they've not moved a muscle up to the seven yeah. you know yes. that's not going to happen either the third thing is really wanting to do this the you determination you want to do this you should want to do this you should want to experience the beauty of your body yeah, you know and so everybody right. may not feel like that and that's okay there's no it's see, it's not compulsory everyone has to feel these things right but for somebody who feels the chance must not be denied you know she must yeah. have full decision making and i also feel now maybe it's a bit too strong i know that women in india are governed by families and you know i i get it but i think in a country that respects and worships women in various yeah. forms we don't need it you know we we have full autonomy over our body to decide what is best yeah. for us definitely definitely you know so i think she I mean, gets to say yeah Yeah, so I think that's the second thing. Yeah, but I do feel eating healthy, keeping a track on your weight. A lot of women in pregnancy take preg. I mean, sorry, a lot of women in pregnancy make it as an excuse to overeat sweets. Mm -hmm. You know, people kind of pamper and all that. See, this is one thing I think our she's different from my time to the current generation is that no one really bothered about us. You know, we would <laughs> just didn't care. Today it's very different. Today you have baby yeah. showers and there's so many things happening. These things never were there. you know during our time it was like you go you have a baby that that's about there's no further thinking from there you know mm -hmm. even the concept of thinking about a surgery did not exist okay you know today it's mm -hmm. like what pain relief option shall i look there's so many things to look at today yeah yeah because yeah. i get a lot of questions asking about you know anesthesia and epidural and you know stuff like that and um i'm like first we need to we'll, we'll talk about it once we cross the bridge so right so yeah like the way you have said yes these things are important which we totally i think yes at least there is awareness about exercising but not much about food and mental yeah, mental mental health you yeah. know which again yes, is that's very important so that crucial is, so crucial one more thing i would say is that every mother today this is valid for today is invest time in solid childbirth education classes led by an independent teacher invest time in learning about breastfeeding these are things that i feel every woman should do today see it was not required before because birth was not medicalized like this it was yes, not this yes. commercial but today women have to make that effort correct saying correct. i don't have time saying i you know i'm busy that's just rubbish you know you really have to push yourself and put yourself to say that and not only you should, it's important your partner also gets educated yeah yeah you alone and are the, not going to do anything over there any agree and this is saving time later on because now if you are like uh, the reason why i got interested in natural childbirth is because as i was reading about lactation i figured that if it is breastfeeding is happening in the first one hour they probably won't need me at all you know mm -hmm. it's if it is just that first golden hour as we say or the first few Spot hours on. are so crucial that so many problems like de uh, postpartum depression you know non mother not able to bond with the uh, baby all yeah. of that will not be there if things are taken care at that hour the problem is yeah. because of the medical intervention when the mother and child are separated you know yeah. breastfeeding is not happening for so many days and that is when you know we have to actually there are people like me are required otherwise yeah. um, if things are happening naturally i don't feel the need of 
even a lactation consultant but as you rightly said because of the medical interventions yeah, they need to be educated you need and you need to know yeah. and i feel another problem in india is when we tell people reach out to a lactation consultant then the whole family is like you don't need one yeah yeah you know that is no whole another arena over there because there's like yeah. millions of mommies and everyone who comes into the picture like no we have all come on i mean you know she gets to decide you know yeah. she's yeah. struggling yeah. she's going through it. so i feel women need to put their foot down and own it correct i so agree so, because yeah. and and i think the part of a big part of your process is also giving equal importance to the mother because what i have seen is that the mother is given all the importance till the baby is born and once the child is born everybody is only focusing on the child you know and then everything is decided according to the child because it's such an intimate thing everything like even breastfeeding and everything beyond that that one needs to give them that time and space you know and uh, that's what when i was going through birth village uh, your lot of articles it's there is so much focus given on the mother which is so beautiful you know like how she is not uh, it's not that she was only meant to deliver and once that work is done we don't need her anymore that's, that's right. not the feeling which you uh, get no, no, no. so and that is so important and that is again uh, another reason why you know they get yeah. into you know, postpartum the, depression the, having said uh, that if you could change part is that there's a million people to take care of the baby but mm-hmm. no one ever asked the mother after birth are you okay yes yes you yes, know she may be crying you. inside she may be actually yeah. crying inside she is terrible i know of people who have extremely difficult strained relationships with their in-laws she is dreading the visit going there like there's a million things going on in her mind you yeah. know uh, a lot of women have told me i'm so scared that my mom in law is going to take my baby away lot of persons you know so she she's actually nobody really asks her what she is going to yeah you know we yeah. say you know 12 12 o'clock the whole world is on the mother because she is carrying the baby 1201 when she gives birth that tension shifts to the baby that's the end of the story yeah. yes yes definitely so if we could just highlight like what are like the like the benefits of going through this process like you know yes of course instinctively that is the most natural process but mm-hmm. if we compare it with the host, any birth in the hospital whether it's vaginal yeah. or cesarean cesarean how is this much more superior superior okay see i feel when a woman is making choices herself even if there are interventions that's when she has an empowering birth experience yeah. that's when she begins to look see today i just there's i my whole appointments today i finished it and we had one mom who had an exceptionally long labor and the birth was tough it was me which of way you look at it it was not easy but at the end of it she said you know what i'm pretty sure i can have 10 more kids because i just want to do this again and again because i want to go back to that support in the team that's what birth should be like birth should not be the day that you fear birth should be about embracing it and that's what a good birth experience should give you i also free care is very aligned to respectful care as to what the mother wants and let it be anything and we have been in situations where we've been in conflict with mothers also that has also happened but the point is how can we work together as a partnership and as a team you know so that is one thing i also feel uh there are many aspects now in india especially if i'm going to pick up one specific topic is vaginal exams okay. so vaginal exams is something unfortunately in the country a lot of women get it first time in labor yeah yeah you know and that is a big big shock for a lot of people yeah it's yeah. a big shock and i feel uh, now i'm going to take it one step more let's imagine it's a girl only 21 or 22 you know uh, in all probability there's a lot of probability that her sexual life with such men had not been the best she might yeah. have been forced to pond she's got married she's had a baby it's just going very fast for her hmm. and it can be a very very traumatic birth experience yeah I always say just because you had a vaginal birth does not mean you're free from trauma. Correct. You're Definitely. Not, it, it I doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it doesn't mean yeah. anything. So I feel a I midwifery mean, led birth is about autonomy, positive birth experience, putting the woman in center. She gets to decide. She will choose who will be with her and who will not be with her. Cases when a woman has been with her partner for the, you know, child birth education and the process, but in the day of the birth she said I don't want him to be there. 
you know yeah, and, yeah. He said, and he was educated enough or you know we didn't take it badly he said i totally understand and i can be outside that's okay yeah you know so it's her call what she wants it's her call and i think that's about putting women in the centrality yeah that's yeah, what it's about yeah. so beautifully put definitely definitely because i think every every mother's focus is on before birth which is pregnancy and post delivery but that birth part is so neglected and which is such an important transition of the child from the intra uterine life to the extra uterine and which is just not given any focus you know like it is just so sad how they are just thrown in the incubators and not given to the mother there is no skin to skin touch they are separated i just feel that this it's so much of injustice to the little child also you know who's sometimes i feel they are crying just because they want to go back to their mother and not want to be held by strangers you know yeah. uh, even you know that's uh, i think the crux of midwifery lies on letting labor to begin on its own without seeing yeah. an expiry date on the uterus uh, they can walk yeah. they can <laughs> climb steps they can do whatever they can stand on their head or do whatever they like whatever yeah. they could yeah. drink normally in labor they can birth in position of their choice this is so important i feel whether it's squatting yeah, yeah. standing whatever um medical interventions only if absolutely necessary with consent uh and partner of and i believe every woman has a right to the support person of their choice that is equally important yeah. and no question of separating a mother and baby after birth unless there is a real medical reason right. no question of separating that baby must be with the mother itself in fact i have felt after the in my initial years when and i wanted to listen to the baby if i kind of maybe after one hour i kind of took the baby to do maybe an exam i can hear that its heart is beating so fast uh, the moment yes. it put it back on the chest it comes down yes yes i do so, so agree on you it. it probably doesn't even like me but you know yeah. it likes me its mother straight away yeah 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 because that's the only habitat like only familiar thing for the baby you know the sound of the heartbeat the smell of the mother and um, that that is so true because even i have seen you know and i feel so sad that uh, why am i even holding the baby because that's all what they want is the mother that time so yeah. but like there are some risks involved too like you know of course so how how do we take care of that in a birthing center like yours yes if at all there are any you know emergencies yes. or anything yes. of that the birth village has been working on one strong philosophy is only healthy pregnancies Which that means we don't take on women with diabetes or hypertension or a baby that's not going well. So that's eliminated. Okay. We are okay. looking at healthy, normal, physiological pregnancies, which is eighty percent of our population. Right, I agree. That that is the number one. Now, at the same time, what most people don't realize is midwives also can they administer uh, drugs if there's a bleeding. They can suture. They can stitch. They administer okay. IVs. they do neonatal resuscitation i uh, even i personally have had situations where i have to use oxygen on babies i have to do mouth to mouth all kinds of situations birth is sometimes you know i keep saying birth is natural and it's part of nature but nature can be wild also sometimes yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> i've had babies that are born that didn't breathe immediately uh and i worked on all all those lines all of them and a, a real midwife has to be experienced in all sectors correct Right. it's not like it's only this it's never like that the things that we do not do obviously we do not do a surgery and uh, over the years from 2010 to 2019 our natural birth rate is 91.4% that is our statistics ah. which means we would have only one or two surgeries a year correct right? and if there's a requirement for a surgery obviously we will transfer care this is what we do hmm. we have to go with transfer care Uh, mm. There is a change that is happening to birth villages also that we are also moving to our new facility probably in a few mm. weeks from now, which is going to be slightly uh, more on the integrative side where we will be having our own surgical capability inside. So that's mm. something new that we are working on because, see, personally, I don't have any interest in the surgical side because that's not uh, my interest is not there. Right? I'm more right. about uh, natural birth and perfecting what I have on that. but i have also grown to realize that women who have a surgery do deserve the best of respectful care also correct i feel even if they have a surgery they can still feed the baby on the ot there, mm-hmm. there is no reason why it should be denied and yeah. these are things i cannot change in other places but i can only work with my institution i can't do right. it 
So nah. we say, you know, we watch for 10, 15 years how things will, what is going to happen. But it's not happening. Okay, so we go to the next level. Let's just go. With yeah. That. You know, so yeah. that's just what it is. And people who travel to Burg Village also, different tribes. We have seen people who are teachers, who are farmers on one end. Uh, we have people in the middle, the IT section, bankers in the middle. On the other end, you will have uh, a lot of business folk. You will have a lot of artists are yeah. normally drawn to this, uh, especially people who work with any kind of uh, art as a medium. They are always drawn to this. And uh, what unites all of them is the passion towards their body uh, unfolding the way it's supposed to be. Yes. Definitely. And that's the same. So in one day, if I see different appointments, for example, my first appointment would have gone to somebody who's a dental surgeon. The second appointment is somebody who's working in the post office. My third appointment will be a, a you know somebody who's a kindergarten teacher. It'll be it's very varied. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's very hard for me to say. Uh, I've even had people who actually own three different hospitals. So even I've wow. seen that also. So you know, I've seen all kinds of things, and I feel yeah. we should. You know, this is must be. Uh, a, it's a choice for anybody. It's it's not like you have to be this or that. There's nothing. Definitely. Else. Yeah, it's a natural process. I mean, there is. Uh, it's not nature hasn't chosen that it can be only done by one and not by the other. It's just a choice which we make. Yeah. But there is a lot of fear around it, you know, because yeah. um, as it's not the conventional style and. Uh, you know, because and that's how the doctors are working. They instill fear in you at the ninth hour, and you are like, you know, they, we do know the picture. Here, at least, the doctors are not even okay to answer all the questions of the mothers. You know, they get uh, if they are always being humiliated that this is such a stupid question. Why would you ask? But I feel that every mother has the right to know, even if it is about the, the smallest of things. You know, there is no right or wrong questions in that. So that yeah. respect is only not given from the very first day when the mother goes to the doctor. Saying that I'm pregnant, they are just given a like a prescription of all the medicines, and that's it. And when they have to, and when is the next sono due? There is no counselling, there is no motivation, none of their questions are answered, and that is, I think, not a very good start for a first time mother at least. Right. So, you know, that that's the interesting thing is that I feel the moment they are shushed down, they need to get out of that place. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're all paying money. We're all yes. paying money for our care. Who's go Okay, yes. if you're in a government hospital, that's different. But otherwise, we're all paying a lot of money. And if we're yeah. paying money, we are entitled to get our questions answered. And yeah. I find it really sad that that is not a priority for a lot of our mothers. Yes, yes. They I have to make that a priority. Because if that's not a priority, then why are they there in the first place? Yeah, yeah. You know? So... Yeah. Yeah, that's very well said, and I think that should motivate all the mothers to choose their doctors wisely. Yeah, at least to start with, and yeah. uh, you know, because over a period they will also be groomed in a way that the mothers won't take shit. So you know, we might as well be a little more courteous to them, and yeah. so yeah. So I have a couple of questions um, which I which the mothers wanted to ask. So I think I'll just oh. start with some. Yeah. So one mother said, "I had uh, I have delivered premature baby." Uh, yeah. In a natural way, in eighth month. So, is there a risk in my second pregnancy, and will I deliver um, a premature baby again if I have a second child? So, uh, a premature, like if you are, if you had a premature baby, there's a fifty percent chance it may happen. Okay. Uh, I would say fifty percent, and fifty percent it may not. We need to really okay. identify why that premature birth. The happened. reason is yes, correct. That, now that part I do not know in this question, but we need to address that, and we really need to work on. Uh, diet, uh, probably look at stress if there was any. It's a well known fact that women, when they give birth, and, yeah. yeah, if there's yeah. anything going on, then that can be a big, big reason, you know. Even right. stress, uh, as otherwise, if there's been any stress in the family, uh, it's yeah. a well documented fact that women who give birth in war zones give birth preterm. Yeah, agreed, agreed. So there's so many uh, things, uh, but I would say, yeah, 50%, there is a possibility. But again, we need to really look as to what, why that happened. Yeah. And the fact is, you said if she works on it, we, are, we can work on the rest 50% when there is no, not a possibility. And Correct. Yeah. I hope that. Yeah. Uh, so the other question is, if natural labor starts and there is a case of meconium, like when I think the child poops, so can we still go for natural birthing? I yes, have of course. Say, 
Yeah. Yes, so absolutely. She had a cesarean birth in such a situation. No, see, meconium is not a reason for cesarean. Meconium, along with the baby's heart rate going down, can become a reason for cesarean. But meconium alone is not a reason. Okay. Okay. And I, again, it depends on the policies of the institution. It depends yeah. on the policies of the care provider. Also, even if I think a million things, if my care provider thinks differently, it doesn't make. Any sense? Any difference? Yeah. It doesn't. I can say like a lot of stuff, but what does it matter at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah. You know? But at least they they are aware of the facts. At least they know. And if yeah, they're absolutely. told, absolutely. Yeah. So that's what is important. Uh, other one says that I was detected with uh, oligohydramnios. Yeah. At thirty seventh week of pregnancy, and doctor performed a C sec the next day. Baby was just two and a half kilos. could i be delivered the natural way in this condition and will i in future be able to ever have a natural delivery yeah i definitely we bark is definitely an option uh, a woman who's had a cesarean surgery can always look at we bark uh, in her next birth now the the definition of low fluid again is different for different care providers uh, some people keep 5 as a cut off i also know a few people who have gone less than that also um but normally under such situations people try to induce labor i mean that's normally what they do if everything else is fine um okay. but again it varies from care provider to care provider it's not necessary the same thing may repeat again either okay and a lot okay. of values we need to understand that the fluid level is a particular volume that was detected at that particular time of the no if we don't know okay. if the uh, value could have been different if she hydrated herself for 24 hours and came back would that value have been different okay okay so okay. lot of parameters play a lot of parameters are there yeah okay okay um i was in 38 weeks everything was normal but the doctor still insisted for cesarean uh, uh citing uh, why wait when baby has fully grown would it would it would it have been better to go for a normal or otherwise how would it impact future i have no idea what that was even done for <laughs> see we that's, you know you know what is so it sad it's very sad we are unfortunately in a country where our cesarean rates in the private sector is raising between 50 to 80% right now Yeah. If people are going, like I said, we talk about this. It's like an eviction notice. It's thirty-eight. Everything is well formed. Let's get the baby out. Why? Why are we in this hurry? Why are we always from uh, so impatient? You know, I feel sad. I taught this in my classes today. We send children to schools in one and a half years when they can't even. You know, they're forced to write when they cannot hold a pencil. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. The same thing for babies. We do not understand that if these babies are not ready, we, and and I have been through a couple of Viva cases, and a lot of these. Uh, there was a mother who said that you know her her care provider said we need to have this baby out of thirty six weeks. There was no reason. There's no reason that the child still suffers from learning disability, still age, and he's thirteen years old. So there's a lot of health conditions that we will we'll be compromising on this child when we perform yeah. surgery so early with the, again we're going back to medical interventions without yeah yeah you know? yeah. Uh, yeah it really again see now this is where again i think arshi would think where is the mother's instinct yeah yeah where is that but why that could be a fear problem is exactly. there's too much fear and the, they are like like i have the mothers who are coming to me but they are like in the ninth hour we are too scared to change our doctor you know exactly. because she knows our history we've been with them for so long and uh, at the end everybody wants a healthy child you know it, it all boils down to that so uh, at least i feel that when i was pregnant i was also very fearful because whatever said and done i want so you really need strong people like you whom yeah. you can trust on you know whom we know that okay fine we are in safe hands because here even if we change the doctor probably we don't know who's better or worse you know? right. so so that's the that's where it um, i don't even i can't uh, hold the mother guilty either because it's just too it's just too sad in the situation itself so otherwise it has to be you know for the community or a partner has to be yeah. very supportive and you know there's yes. so many um, yes yes i would say yeah it's like a similar yeah. case that we had was a, a mom who was 39 weeks and she was working for a we back in another institution and she was uh, her height was 4'10 and you know she was always promised a we back but exactly on a 39 week visit 
she said the the care provider said you're too short to have a wee bag the cord oh <laughs> you know so i guess you know i i mean i'm curious as to how she became short all of a sudden in the night yeah so that is what we call the bait and switch model you're baiting mothers and so you get them you bait them and then you switch them you know but yeah. this mother took up a call then and there she said i'm not I'm not doing this and she had this very we had a very good wee bag together but it takes a lot for a woman to walk out yeah a lot it's, a lot it takes a lot you have to be a, like you need to have a lot of courage to do that courage right? bold and you know this yeah. is the interesting thing is today it takes courage to birth naturally agreed again you know, i think yeah, that's I the think most important thing for surgery but okay. you know if you ask 30 40 years back it was the other way around now yeah. it's going to be the other way around yeah. because everybody has uh, accepted surgery as normal nobody yes, and right. it's it, and it's actually quite implies that oh you must have birth through a surgery you know so people uh, don't want to even ask you because this is very birth and now a normal like a vaginal birth only seems uh, like a very big uh, thing you know they really congratulate you if you are able to do that so yes i totally agree with what you say so uh, this mother says i was diagnosed with uh, initial stage uh, ductal carcinoma during 7 months yeah. of pregnancy and doctor said it was due to hormonal changes so will it be dangerous for me to plan again to have a child again no i think if treated and well i don't think that's a problem okay so she can go ahead and obviously we need more details but by yeah, this much information detail. that's that's a case that needs more details correct correct so then you'll be able to so yeah i mean everybody now knows birth village they can get in touch with you just in case they want more elaborate answers and in detail uh so another one this is now day doctors prefer inducing labor than actually going to labor even when everything from health perspective is normal why is this trend seen are there any risks or benefits the there is a general trend and a statement of once it's 39 weeks it's better to go ahead and induce and get the baby out because they're saying there is lesser preterm births associated with it yeah okay yeah there is there is a statement like this but having said that it is also clear that when labors are being induced you are likely to have more painful labors you yeah. are likely to have more fetal distress which can mm-hmm. lead to further complications and a surgery right 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 uh in any way a woman who begins spontaneous labor is the one who's likely to have a positive outcome there's no doubt about that okay okay you know there is no it's just easier on the body it's easier on her uh if babies are working with the rhythm of the mother's body and that is clear when labors are spontaneous correct that's that's just it that's just how it is about uh, induction definitely it has its own share of risks uh, and i hope that all women who choose it are completely aware of this this is a possibility and this can happen to me it's right. very much something that can happen and we need to acknowledge that right so having said that uh, till when is it okay to wait like till how many weeks like you know 42 41 like because you know 42. sometimes it's 42 42 weeks yeah. okay it's 36 to 42 weeks is the uh, space where uh, we right. say we can wait for a healthy birth to begin so because majorly what i was told by my doctor was that now once a child because they they put on weight very quickly like they gain weight very fast in the last trimester so in my sonography my child was already 3.2 kilos so she was like if we wait for another week he'll she's going to be 3.54 kilos and then it will get more difficult for you to birth you know uh, naturally so that's not the case right even if that's not um, the case no no what we define as a big baby is anything that's above 4.5 okay okay 3.2 so is a very normal weight. birth weight i mean that's a nothing that's really nothing and secondly babies mold and fit through a birth canal we cannot say that till the woman goes into labor that is not possible i've seen some very short women birth 4 kilo babies like a breeze and i've seen some 2.5 kilo babies give a hard time so i i don't believe in any of these things it doesn't okay, mean anything okay. it doesn't mean anything people think that i had a mother who said i'm eating less so i can create a small baby and i'll just push it out fast she's wrong she had a long labor you know Yeah. So there's nothing yeah. like that. Nothing like that. So like when the when you when the child, baby uh, when you when the birth is done so there do we don't even give any form of stitches. 
to the mother or are, do they get sutures after no no if there is a, there is a deep tear we do suture we do suture okay. but we don't perform routine episiotomy okay that okay. is only if there is a reason see in 10 years we would have done maybe eight or nine that's it wow wow I mean, all, there's no need stuff. actually. No, you don't need. And uh, when we need to understand that natural tears, it's more difficult to suture, but heals much better for the mother. Oh, okay. There's no, and also we need to think, Harshi. When our grandmothers gave birth, there was nobody sitting to do an episiotomy. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. all went through this process. The only difference in their time was there was a lot of knowledge on herbs, warm yeah. oils, which a lot yeah. was used at the perineum at yeah. that point of time. yeah the the thing that we change today is we use a lot of warm cloths we use oils we we use the same things but of course i cannot claim the perfection of our ancestors because i'm sure they had much more knowledge about plants than me yeah. but we are trying to do the best we can so that that's amazing that's so beautiful i mean everything is organic i mean everything is yeah, totally. as natural I, I as really possible i really believe in that yeah and i also believe when the baby we are pushing the baby out the whole trend is to like push 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 kind of a thing but actually if you want to breathe your baby out breathe. you could yeah. you, know, you could go with very minimal tearing it's possible yeah yeah the you know, more you requires the alignment of everybody around you yes 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 so that's so like yeah because even i remember um i was just breathing instinctively i was just breathing throughout you know whenever and that that made my labor at least shorter so that was just instinctively that i did but yes i now i can relate that there is so much more important than just shouting or you know somebody pushing it push push or like any of those things yeah, yeah so we have a couple of more questions um, yeah. how can one ab- avoid uh, cholestasis in the second pregnancy so what question how can Yeah, I'll just show you the question. Oh yeah, uh, the question was, um, is it the one at the end? Yeah, sorry, what was the question? Yeah, this one. Uh, how can one avoid cholestasis? Cholestasis. Okay. Cholestasis. cholestasis uh, I've seen that there's a woman, uh, a woman in my own care who had cholestasis for the first one, and the second one she didn't have it. We encourage them to diet-wise. We talk a lot for them on olive oil and beetroot. this is my okay. go to and we jump i talk a lot about this uh, this should help to a great extent uh, again it's not necessary this may happen again it's not necessary okay you know okay so it's completely possible that she may not have it at all but diet wise this is what i can recommend okay because she says that uh, with cholestasis i delivered at 34 week as my bile acids crossed 100 my caregiver yeah. said that i cannot deliver naturally right well so, it's uh, it's again like i said that is the decision made at that time again we have to see mm-hmm. for the second one what can be done it's all usually cholestasis is because of a stressed out liver yeah so we, correct we need to see how to detoxify throughout the pregnancy and how to keep that liver as stress free as possible and that involves a lot of herbs in fact ayurveda has a lot of good uh, recipes yeah. for this so i'm highly recommending that Oh, very nice. When is to okay? This is to do with the uh, uh, lactation, but uh, 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 one person says, "Can I have some tips from your uh, from you for expecting parents on how to advocate for themselves with their doctors?" Right. See, I feel the first thing is make sure that, like I told this earlier, make sure you are informed enough. Because if you are not informed, then you do not know what to ask. So that is one thing. Okay. The second thing is. uh visit uh, at least three four different places you don't have to stick to one place third thing is um i'm not saying that we will get a 10 on 10 i'm not saying that but at least you have to get a 7 on 10 yeah. you know whatever your birth wishes are at least a 7 try for a 7 people ask me like sometimes they ask me can i try for a birth village birth in this institution so i said don't don't let's not com- let's not put that together but the policies and philosophies take it with you and ask also know minimum 3 people who gave birth in your space no 3 people yeah. who gave birth in your space talk to them about their birth uh, what it was Experience. like it, yeah. yeah if they all had induced labor then that's what's going to happen to you correct so and walk in with your eyes open you know you are your own uh, savior honestly at the end right. of the day nobody is going to do anything yes. and say oh hi come i'm going to do this for you nobody is so you have to push for yourself and 
search for all options unconventional conventional whatever this is the best for me you know so the, i feel be vocal uh, there's nothing to feel uh, yes you know uh, bad about uh, we don't yeah. have to really take uh, an answer and backtrack back at all uh, ask what you want and remember this a care provider who's truthful who's honest who will also tell you what they can do and what they can't do yes yes so I preparedness is the key. you know yeah that that is very important yeah yeah right so uh, adam adam says how soon can we plan after a miscarriage so i think after miscarriage uh, i feel some time to heal emotionally is important body wise i think 3 yeah. months or so is fine but emotionally you need to be in a place where you completely feel okay free of uh, you know we shouldn't be planning a baby just for the sake of it i think when you're really ready to receive another soul into your life that's my answer yeah yeah physically 3 um, months is fine that's but emotionally so that's a big problem. yes definitely definitely um other mother says that can a low lying anterior placenta move a uh, move up after 30 second week yeah why not in fact the placenta position you cannot determine till somebody is 36 weeks or so okay and uh, other says uh, is folic acid tablet a must for pre pregnancy how much mg can we take see what is recommended today is not folic acid it is methyl hydrofolate right okay. so that is the recommended one and that is 2 months before conception after conception if it's food wise uh, like things like your rajma broccoli bananas have yeah. uh, folate to a great extent see whether somebody chooses yeah. vitamins or not is their personal choice okay it's not a must there are people yeah it, i cannot say that because there are certain people or certain groups of people who do not want to take supplements of any sort yeah yeah and that's a personal call knowing fully well that folate is something that helps to prevent neural tube defects for the baby but if you feel for whatever reason you don't want to take it and that is your call then that's your decision see there right. is something right. that but one must take an informed is, uh, decision that's right there is something called as informed consent and informed refusal okay okay you know it cannot be okay. manipulated a care provider gives all the choices explains everything and you decide what you want to do yeah i think that that's like so basically the power is in your hands to be informed and then decide wisely so that you are that's you have no regrets whatsoever whatsoever you uh, you select what you want and tomorrow you should not regret that i didn't look at all my options that's the way yeah you know and sometimes definitely, it takes a birth definitely. for a lot of women it takes one birth to realize what they really want it happens yeah i agree i mean for me also it was a total game changer just that whole process yeah. Process, so yeah. uh, i think it's it's a very beautiful process and there's a lot of fear that is built around it and mothers just want to get done with it they're like you give do a cesarean birth and i just want the child to be out you know but as you rightly said it's the process that's important and not the product which is the baby at the end so uh, i think we've answered most of the questions and i hope uh, everybody got their answers and before we you know go I, is there any last piece of advice which you want to give to all the mothers or anything that um, that's coming from i you? think my only thing is um, all mothers should stand up for their children and the babies that are inside uh, they can stand up for what they feel is right they can accept or decline according to what they feel is right not based on what your husband thinks or what your parents think what you feel is right for you you have every right to decide for yourself and don't let others take your thunder from you you know you you are the yeah. sole person who can decide for your baby at the end of the day you know we all know this as indian women we know this we are the ones who take care of our children 24 bar 7 you know whether they 2 3 10 whatever it is you know we we are the ones and there is no reason why your rights and your voice should not be heard at all you know so i yes. think the the woman is at the fulcrum and she gets to make that call earlier i wouldn't say that i would say it's important to put the partner in i used to say this myself at least in you know at least the 5 6 years back but i've stopped saying that i'm, I'm not saying it anymore i really feel it's the woman all the way and she gets to decide 
there are cases nowadays we have births where it's just the woman alone there's no partner there's no support there's no nothing you know um and we are okay with that and again who are pregnant by choice and they are single and there is no partner with them you know and uh, that's fine that's her choice Wow, I think it's a you know, great so um, inspire at least for me to meet people like you. Yeah, because it's very well. There are very less people who are literally empower uh, the mothers, you know, or women. You know, a lot. Everybody talks about women empowerment, but nobody actually knows what it means. You know, it's just not about rights, and there are so many small things that need to be taken care of. And I feel yeah. so blessed that we finally have someone like you in our country who is taking right. this so passionately. and i hope to yeah. see more many more centers of birth village across the country so that many more women yeah. have this option and they can take this informed decision you know because um, it is a very crucial part and i, I think, think the first step uh, up as a mother end, maybe to as a mother yeah i think arushi what i can end this live with is we also need to realize how blessed we are to have the resources that we have sometimes um and i because we since i came to the topic of single motherhood i can end with that is i had this one i think she came to me yeah from another place up north she came to me from and she leads a huge company there and she was pregnant she was 42 it's her first pregnancy and the partner doesn't want anything to do with it she wasn't married and she went three times he took her three times to terminate the pregnancy they went three times and all three times she came back because she couldn't do it she just couldn't bring herself to do it uh-huh. she traveled from uh, up north down all the way to us and her biggest need now this is the interesting thing we talk about birth justice is she her thing was she did not want to put the father's name on the birth certificate this was her thing okay she said he has no role he has no space and i yeah. and wherever she went everyone said you need to put the mother and the father she said there is no father for this child yeah. because he's not part of the care he's not part of this child and yeah. that is her right that is her right and i yeah. still remember you know we yeah. going to labor she's 42 first time having this birth she maybe a 10 hour labor has this baby and i've still not forgotten when this baby was born beautiful girl beautiful and she looks at this girl and she's just you know she she's just raining tears on this child and saying and she's talking in hindi and she kept on saying i cannot believe i went three times i would have not had you you know she kept on and on yeah. and on and she kept on saying and saying and saying you know she kept on calling her baby laddu and you know it was just it was just i know i, I will never forget that i can never forget that and today yeah. she's continuing her career she it's 6 years and she has this lovely 6 year old with her she's in the us today having a terrific career she's solo with her child and she's leading the life that she wants you know and she's not ashamed she's not shy about it you know and we need women to get justice for whatever they feel is right we are nobody to question them we have not reached that level you know so that's very very yes important. i so and i hope that women you know we we at least yeah. have resource of somebody supporting us these lot of people don't have that yeah you know, so yeah i think okay. that's that's important for us to understand and most importantly also i think you know you know now of course i'm on the other i'm older and i you know when i look at somebody young and beautiful like you arshi i feel like god i'm so old <laughs> but you know arshi you are starting out and you're going to make a huge mark wherever you are and wherever you choose to try you're going to make a huge huge mark to your mothers and always remember to speak your truth we don't have to shy away for anything nothing oh, yes yes no no definitely you are such an inspiration Thank and i'm going to follow each and every advice you have said you women like you are beautiful both inside out and that's what we aspire to be eventually you know so thank you so much because of constraint of time we can't take no, this conversation no ahead but uh, i am so pumped up as a mother and i hope uh, we could inspire the rest as well and all the yeah. best for all your passions and i hope uh, you know we can be, we can contribute in whatever way so thank you so much for your time thank and wishing you, you all so the luck with all your endeavors okay thank, thank you. you take care bye bye